All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the first webinar, uh, Chamcast. We are doing live and we are with Gilad, Flynn, David, Ruben, and Sizra. These are renowned professionals, they run agencies, and I would like to you know, give them the floor to introduce themselves. Uh, today's session is about adapting to the ever-changing marketing landscape. And we are always thrilled with technology innovations, like for, exa for example, Elon Musk taking charge of Twitter, you know, charging the APIs, what it means for agencies, we'll be discussing that. Mastodon, Blue Sky, um, Reels, TikTok Reels, we'll be talking about those changes and also the influence of AI. Uh, we have this industry experts. Uh, does it mean that people would not rely on agencies? They would create their own videos. Um, what it means for with AI, should we rely more on so on agencies or not? So we'll be discussing all that in today's uh, webinar. So giving the floor to uh, Gilad. First question to you. Like I would love to have all your introductions, a few sentences, and then you can kick off with the questions. Again, thank you so much for joining. We have. In agencies from different parts of the world. Um, thank you for giving your time. Over to you, Glad. Just a few introduction about you, what you do, what your agency does, and we can move forward. Amazing. So my name is Gilad. I'm the CEO and founder of Mobers. Uh, Mobers has been around in the last 10 years, uh, working with the category leaders, had an amazing experience working with Google, Samsung, Uber, some of those huge, huge beasts, uh, and helping them uh, solve their growth challenges. Our specialty is specifically on mobile marketing, mobile apps. That's kind of what we do probably better than anyone else. Um, and besides that, very happy to be here today. Perfect. Nice to meet you. And next we have Flynn. Over to you. Hey. I'm Flynn Lutziger, CEO of Online Optimism. Started it about 11 years ago. Grown it since then. So we have two physical offices in Washington, D.C. and New Orleans. And we help businesses with social media as well as really any other aspect of the internet from analytics to creative. So excited to be here with everyone. Awesome. And now let's go to Ruben. Yeah, uh, Ruben Budarabi, CEO and founder of the Austin Agency. We're a creative growth lab. We help uh, mid-sized large organizations pressure test their next big idea and also how to execute it. So we uh, we run red teams, ghost teams, take on the role of a phantom competitor. And what would it look like if we were to disrupt you? Where's the opportunity and how do you turn it into, how do you turn your vulnerabilities into opportunities and see explosive growth? So we basically teach entrepreneurial competitiveness so organizations can operate at startup speed using their enterprise resources. Wow, interesting. Sidra. Okay, so I am uh, Sidra Abzal, the Digital Marketing Manager at Said Gani. Uh, since 1888, the brand has been working since a decade. And with over six years of experience in the field, uh, my passion for the digital sector continues to grow alongside its constant innovation. So I uh, right now is to you know prosper the brand uh, which has been working in generations awesome glad to have you all on the show uh, all right so just let me kick off with the first question guys uh, the first question everybody's talking about and you would know that uh, hey david nice to meet you um, thank you for joining in yeah we we're just going through the introductions i would love to have a quick introduction of you in two sentences and then you can go over the questions uh, yes, I'm David Bosley, CMO and uh, co-founder of PBJ Marketing offices in New York and D.C. So I'm actually in D.C., so I'm sure if, I wonder if you're in town as well, so we can connect after this. But uh, full-service digital agency, uh, most of our work we do is paid advertising on virtually every paid platform. You know, we, we dig into the data to figure out what works best for our clients. Awesome. Good to see all agencies, you know, from the world and, you know, on this, on this webinar. All right, so we're kicking off with the first question. Uh, the first question I have is around, you know, it's almost expected. It's about AI disrupting uh, a lot of different fields out there. You know, customer support, CSR are in trouble. They think, you know, their jobs would be lost. Content writers are, you know, hectic. Uh, so what do you think about AI is, taking, is basically the talk of the town these days, right? So how can agencies, you know, you're running agencies, how can, what, you know, strategies could you, can you adopt to be, stay, stay ahead of this curve? And do you see it as a, something that will take control and 
you know your ch- clients could churn that they would actually have the ability to create now videos and images and they would actually stop going to agencies uh, for this production um, so I just want to take this question and want to have the perspective from each one of you one by one um, I think we can start with uh, glad on, on this um, sure so I think that the AI is definitely here and it's here to stay um, we're not afraid of it we are embracing it and we are trying to see how we can work with those tools to actually enhance our clients and actually provide them better experience and also cheaper experience when we can save labor let's definitely do that uh, having said that you do need the storytelling elements and you do need to understand the brand better than anyone else and you do need to understand and make sure that when you are going through this process you are staying consistent to your brand values and I think that the AI can definitely help us with a lot of different things, a lot of automations, a lot of data analysis, going through so many different elements. But the storytelling and the, the, the magic of creation, of understanding the brand better than anyone else and seeing how we can tell its story to the world, I feel like that's something that will always be there. I think that this is the human touch that, um, like touching the emotion of the human, I, I believe that humans can do better than machines. Um, but that's kind of my take. Perfect. Um, and, you know, going to Flynn, you know, just to add on to the question, um, do you also see, had you ever had a churned customer saying that now we can do with the AI? No, not yet. I don't, I, I'm sure that organizations are around the world trying to use AI to essentially save money. I don't think we've really competed on price at our agency, but I, I do assume that agencies that were really fighting for quantity over quality and just always trying to get a lower cost to win business, I would be pretty scared. But I think Philip saying that essentially if you have always fought to get more clients from higher quality work, then I think AI should be seen as a pretty useful tool at helping you deliver that work at a faster pace. Awesome. That's a good perspective. David, would you agree with that? Anything contradictory? Yeah. So a challenge that we've had is getting quality content, quality creative, either produced by their in-house teams or approved by the client through our teams, um, as well as getting video assets. That's always been a challenge. Even the biggest companies, I, I, the bigger, they, the bigger, the larger the company is, the more people, the more people need to sign off. Right. So, if anything, I think AI is going to speed up deliverables and at least give clients um, choices faster so that we as marketers can take those assets and then, you know, run with them. And then if we have enough assets, we can actually do proper A-B testing or whatnot. So if, if anything, for our clients, it is sped up production. It hasn't harmed in any way. Wow. Perfect. Now, carrying on with that conversation, Ruben, um, did it also help you scale content production, video production? Like, have you used AI, have your agency used any generative AI-based videos to promote ads, content? Has it helped you scale it? Um, what, you know, David has shared. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Nice to be here. Um, I, I'm, we, we, are, we are just exploring it. It's in the early stages. AI has been around for 15 years. It's just now coming to the forefront. So it's, it's, not, it's not new, new. It's just becoming more public than it ever has been. I think it's going to allow clients to do more with less. And I think that's the big theme that we're hearing in these big organizations right now. More with less. We, budgets are under constraints. We're trying to save as many people's jobs as we can. We need more tools to still get the job done. I view AI the same way I view the restaurant industry. If I want a meal, I can make my own. I can go to the supermarket. I can go get order, pick up, or I can go to a restaurant. There's plenty of space for all of it in the marketplace. I'm not afraid of it. So it will it will take on its role just like email did 20 years ago, 25 years ago. It's just part of the evolutionary cycle. I think it's exciting. Some jobs will go away, but I think it will also create new opportunities for new roles uh, within these different organizations. So I think it's a, I think it's going to ultimately be a net plus. Perfect. And Sidra, how, how has AI helped, you know, Saeed Ghani, you know, the brand itself to, you know, sell to more customers, generate ads, show your products in a good, you know, pictures? How did, does it help or not? 
Okay, uh, through AI, obviously, it has helped, uh, uh, like, for prospering the brand, obviously. Uh, like, uh, through AI marketing campaigns, uh, companies can leverage vast amount of data to create personalized product recommendations and resulting in increased conversations and customer satisfaction as well. Uh, so, such as marketing op uh, automation platforms and automate tasks and the de email delivery, it has been very easy now. Like, we do not need... Uh, any uh, kind of specific resource for all these perspective like it's it's a one one go job now it has simplified a lot of stuff especially on the content area perfect all right so now the next question is very you know it's challenging it's a tough one so brace yourself so so ai you guys handle very well like it's it's something that we embrace it it's good uh, it's been for many years. It's just that people are now, the adoption is going on scale. The next question is very really challenging. Is that how would it affect SEO? Like Facebook is pretty, uh, Google is pretty, you know, stunned that, you know, Chat GPT is now, they're trying to compete with Chat GPT right now. They have used their own bard.google, right? But a lot of experts in SEO say that it was, it's going to affect the traffic, organic traffic. Some say it won't affect it, right? Uh, because people would actually search something and then it, the AI would actually give them the answers so the people would not go to their site, right? So there would be a drop of traffic. Um, what do you think about this? Is it a myth? Is it something that will actually help increase organic traffic? Would it decrease organic traffic? Uh, where should business now focus on? Should this focus more on other avenues other than content marketing? Or is it something that you think it's too early to say? And yeah, so this would go to start with the tough one. Would we will start with uh, David? You can take this one now. So uh, I mean, there was a, I think it was search engine land. Someone someone published recently a study on zero clicks, the rise on zero clicks, because so many uh, Google, Google search SERPs have changed, where you you kind of get the answer right away, where you don't need to click again. Um, so that's been on a rise lately, with. AI, I think a lot of people will still, I don't, it's hard to tell. I think people, I think there might be an increase of search for quick answers. You know, like I use ChatGBT almost daily for certain quick questions, right? That I wouldn't normally even ask Google. Um, but now that Google is integrating BARD and, and Microsoft's got GPT integrated, I think there might be an increase in search volume for generic searches, like quick understandings. Um, but there will, I think there will be more zero clicks where, you know, I get my, my answer. I was always going to Google it or search it, right? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get that answer and I'm going to have, you know, rise of zero clicks. <laughs> What's the impact going to be? I don't know. I almost predict that the, uh, at least on the paid side, that uh, traditional search ads, which we normally paid on a cost per click or depending on your camp campaign optimization of, you know, CPA or, or ROAS, there might be, they, the ad platforms might charge on a CPM basis. You know, they're going to see an ad. Um, I, I predict that's going to change. These platforms will try to monetize for sure. Um, I, I, I envision that change from an SEO perspective. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, I think there'll be an increase in traffic. I think there'll be more zero clicks. Uh, but as marketers, we will find a way. We will find our way into how to get into those search results. So, uh, I guess my advice is just stay very diligent um, and, you know, figure out, embrace it. Yes, don't be afraid of it. Awesome. Great addition to it. Embrace it and look, also look for opportunities out there, right? Good advice. Ruben, would you like to add something onto it? Yeah, I, I'm, just have a, I'm curious about maybe the rise in subscription models as opposed to pay-per-click. We will see many different organizations uh, featuring their own versions of chat GPT and their own AI data and, and proprietary data streams. And so I'm wondering if they're going to move more to a subscription model where, hey, if you want to subscribe, we have the superior model. We can bring you answers streamed and, and condensed much quicker. And so I think there's going to be a change in the revenue model. Uh, maybe a mixture for a while, but I'm, I'm, you know, people do like annual reoccurring revenue. They do like SaaS models. I'm wondering if there's a subscription play here that's in the early stages of, uh, of happening. Interesting. That's a really interesting perspective. Never thought about that way. Yeah, a lot of people, even ourselves, are trying to research on the models, AI models, and how we could actually put that out there. Uh, that's a good perspective. Uh, 
carry on, you know, trying to know the opinion. Flynn, uh, what's your opinion on this? I think the uh, advertisers are going to win. I, I think we've been seeing that even across other media platforms where the ones who were exclusively relying on subscriber revenue, like Netflix, are now offering lower tiers for ads. I think that that's just a better way for businesses to make money. And I don't know if it actually makes the internet better, but advertisers do help run and provide revenue to organizations. And we're seeing that more and more. So I think that I, I think that we should all enjoy this little golden age of AI before agencies get their claws into it um, and we start buying ads because, yeah, there's no way that these businesses could just run through hundreds of millions of cloud expenses to run these tools without letting advertisers in. I think we're six to 12 months away from that being an entire new service line for agencies like us to sell. Oh, interesting. So. So getting on to Sidra, so just my question is, so what, from where do you get customers now? Is it, uh, is it helping you? Uh, organic search is helping you. Are you li- looking for other strategies where you could actually think about? Because now SEO is people are having these questions about SEO. Are you advancing to other strategies? What has been successful for the brand? It's a very old brand, um, almost two or three decades old. So just wanted to see how an old brand is da- adopting to new changes. So uh, recently when I joined, uh, I, I experienced and learned that how product photography and traditional marketing helps as usual. Uh, but a consumer behavior change has occurred and they prefer seeing real organic testimonials right now, like real content which can relate to the customer that's made uh, by both influencer or either the consumers which are using the products on the daily basis. So influencers, of course, open new new portal and they bring up the followers and increase the engagement and all. Um, but uh, for you know, uh, the building the con- consumers and developing them and increasing them, obviously they help and uh, consumers uh, obviously make the brand. So what we are looking into right now that we create testimonials, we. Uh, get the testimonials from the consumers and that's kind of that's one uh, part of the marketing that we are practicing right now awesome interesting interesting so Gilad again on the tough question what do you think about the SEO traffic is going to go up down should the businesses or brands like SaaS companies should focus on other avenues to generate you know traffic should we totally focus on SEO Uh, what do you think I think that it's really hard to tell. Um, in short run, from the way that I look at it, I think that there are a huge amount of opportunities. I think that you will also start fighting against like SEO within ChatGPT. Like uh, when you are searching in ChatGPT, best mobile marketing agencies currently, uh, we are number one there, for example. And the reason that we are number one is that it searches in many different sites and then see who has the highest listings and then based on that, put you there. So it's still kind of because we won in SEO, we won in ChatGPT with the way that it, it takes the data from Bing um, or from, again, depending on which model, 3.5, 4, or if it's the, the one that is connected to the uh, to the internet. But um, at the end of the day, I think that SEO, um, I think that there will be less people that are asking Google questions. I think that there will be more people asking um, um, ChatGPT or like type of uh, AI tools uh, questions. And I think that uh, Google will also need to revise their um, their search query. So it, the fact that you're asking a question and you need to review hundreds or thousands of sites to be able to find that instead of them showing you this is probably what you're referring to, that's because they're more... That, that that's how they monetize. So they will find new models and actually monetize it in, in, in different ways, just like you have display, just like you have many other uh, avenues. So I think that just like anything else, um, organic uh, traffic will shift slowly. I think that uh, uh, nowadays, for example, for a client that we used to do four um, uh, blog posts every, every uh, month, so once a week, uh, we are now, we can do exactly in the same capacity using AI around 50 articles. Uh, every uh, every month with exactly the same person who is sitting on their blog and actually writing and drafting the content. And that's because we get all of those shortcuts using AI. So you will have a huge amount of content, too much content, if you will. And then the question is, what is quality content? Where users are actually staying for the longer run and then how you can actually make an impact 
over um, uh, over what it, whatever the users were searching for. So I think that this is a, a start of a kind of another another stage in the in the side of uh, of going through this uh, revolution and. I don't see, you know, just like Flynn said, I think that the marketers will win at the end of the day, will change the tools, but you will still have paid acquisitions that's going to be running most of the show and you still have direct traffic. So whoever is looking for Macy's will find Macy's. I don't need to search for it. I, I know what the brand is, is all about. So I think that that will just continue in, and the tools for the marketeers will just continue on evolving as the time go, goes by. Three years ago, who thought of TikTok, right? Like, who knew about what TikTok is all about? Nowadays, I see zero brands that have uh, uh, no presence on, on TikTok. So things are evolving and it's just part of the evolution. I think that's a very fair point, I think. Uh, I still remember remember that, you know, when I was using ChatGPT, I asked what are the top social media marketing tools out there. It listed, listed us in the list and I figured out that he, the content was picked from certain specific sites. And then I trained it and said that, hey, this is something much more better than this. And it started getting trained. But the question was, the way I trained that model, the chat GPT model, it's, it, it hasn't trained the same for other users. It has only trained that for my own chat, right? Uh, but that's a very interesting perspective that, hey, the, the, the data, the knowledge base is basically been extracted by the sites that are present online. So, you know, SU will have some role onto it, but the traffic will basically disperse. Right, uh, great feedback on that, Gilad. Um, and also the questions are very common, right? So for example, like you said, uh, you used to generate one specific piece of content. Now, the number of content has increased because of AI. But the question is, w will Google someday catch that the content is produced by AI or not? And if it catches, will it, will it you know, put some less points for your domain, right? So a lot of content creators are saying that, hey, we would produce content not using AI because one day Google might figure out this is done by AI and our site would be down. That's a very complex question. So uh, that's a different question. But I want to ask one question that a lot of agencies, digital agencies are being asked by clients. Uh, whenever you know, new, startup, new startups who are trying to run agencies as they go, they see clients asking one question and that is, if you can make them go viral, right? You would have faced a lot of customers, you know, messaging you and clients coming to you, hey, when would we go viral? You know, what is one content that would go viral? Uh, how do you, or how would a new agency who's starting up reply to that customer, right? Um, what should be the best reply to them? Uh, and this question is for a lot of digital agencies, owners, founders who want to start agency, who want to scale, and they're actually stuck at this point that people come and say, hey, what's the ROI, you know? What's the ROI of doing content search when the results are after three months? You know, what the social media post, everybody knows is dead, organic reach is dead, right? How do you answer that? Uh, this answer would be very helpful to people who are starting agencies. So this question I can start first with Flynn. Uh, how do you answer that? Yeah, uh, if anyone asks me to go viral, I just send them to whatever agency I'm upset at that time and uh, say that they'd be a better source. Uh, I, I think that going viral is, is fun to think about. I also like asking them, you know, like what, how would you do it? And they always say, oh, I saw this agency do this a week ago. Because, you know, nothing says going viral better than doing what someone did a week ago uh, yourself. Uh, I think that those people, if, if you want instant success on the internet, uh, you, you have a better chance of going to a casino and, and putting a lot of money on roulette. It's, it's not something that, it, there's just so much luck involved in those sorts of wins. I think that we try to talk to them and say, look, Going viral once is great, but building a actual community that engages with your brand and wants to see you succeed and has a more personal human element is just a better long-term strategy. And it goes with the content too. Um, your brand and people actually trusting your business is going to lead to much more long-term revenue than a viral video on TikTok and 10 million views. Not everyone wants to hear that, but not everyone is the perfect fit for our agency, and it's just a conversation you have to have. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's a very good answer. Ruben, how do you deal with that? Well, I think, um, first of all, I love your answer to David. I thought it was great. Um, you know, 
there's a statistic that came out not too long ago in the New York Times that says 67% of all new business comes via referral. And so, you know, if that is true, and I think there's some truth to that, then you're spending all this money in about 33% of the population, 67% of the population will never respond to ads, will never respond to direct messaging, organic or otherwise. So it's how do you how do you arm and equip the folks you've done business with to make strategic introductions and referrals? And the referral business is always the best business. You walk in with credibility, you walk in with less competition, it's proven to be more profitable, it's it's proven to be more enduring. So the, the real biggest piece of the pie is the referral business. And if you want to go viral, I highly recommend coming up with really um, powerful referral strategies and how do you arm your key constituents, your key customers, making them the hero, increasing their impact and influence and having them want to open doors for you into their relationships and their networks. So that is, if you, if you want to go viral, quote unquote, I mean, there's no, I mean, you can always get quick wins. That's different from going viral. You can always have a, a, a spike. That's different from going viral, but it's the same as going to the gym. you got to put in the time, effort, sweat, and just dedication to making your growth work. And I think if you can work existing relationships where you already had some powerful wins and have them be your champions, that's the best way to have the least amount of competition, the highest profit margins, and uh, and probably some of the most innovative marketing out there. And you can use a lot of these strategies, but just figuring a way to, to enroll your allies in your efforts. Yeah, totally makes sense. Riffle traffic is something that if you start having alpha audience or customers and they start referring you, you can beat your competition in no time. Um, totally agree with that. Um, David, what do you think about when somebody asks you this question? How do you reply to them? No, I, I, I agree with Floyd and Ruben. Um, the only other tip I want to add is uh, if you want to go viral on a personal level, I have seen everyone has the capability to go viral on TikTok. It's almost part of their, their algorithm. So. If, if you personally want to just keep producing trendy content, it's almost like TikTok purposely selects, um, it almost wants everyone to go viral. Like I've seen at least two of my personal friends go extremely viral without even trying, right? They're not trying to be influencers. They're, I would say normal users, but they, but TikTok has made each of them go viral at least once, right? Um, so if you personally want to go viral, I think TikTok is the way to go. I think you just, that's the algorithm. Just keep producing content over and over again, and it will. Um, I've seen influencers re-record the same video over and over and over again. It's obnoxious, and they know what they're doing, because eventually TikTok's going to pick up one of them and make it go viral, and they delete all the old ones. So on a personal level, you can go viral. Does that benefit you? You know, that's, you got to know what you're getting into. If you just want to go viral for, for vanity, fine. I've never seen a business do it. I'm sure if you did the same principles, maybe TikTok would. They probably want you to pay for it. But yeah, I agree. It's why do you why do you need to go viral? Um, what's the benefit from it? Um, usually, going viral is because it's popular, just because it's you know trendy right now. It's comedic, but all those people that liked liked it aren't necessarily your customer, and you can see that because it, it went viral, but then your follower count didn't increase. So. Okay, great. You went viral, but had really little to no benefit other than that short-lived time frame. But yeah, you should you should focus on what's actually going to build a community, what's actually going to drive business. If it is referrals, you should know that out of the gate before you're even asking the question. Make me go viral. You probably don't need to go viral if, if most of your business comes from referrals. So, hundred percent agree on those three comments. These are really good ones. You know, people do not actually know why they want to go viral. They just like the count, basically, on TikTok. They see that, hey, two million likes, uh, and they're like happy with it. There's nothing to do with them, right? Um, that's a good comment. Sidra, going to you, what, what if your boss tells you that create a strategy that will make us go viral? You know, How do you respond to them? Like, hey, boss, it doesn't work like that. Okay, so um, as a brand, I'd uh, you know like to share a concept or something. Uh, recently, I was uh, collaborating with another brand for a campaign as a freelancer, obviously because I'm a marketer, so I work freelance as well. So um, you know, uh, I came up with this idea uh, about the influencer. Obviously, I would second David here because uh, it's all about influencers right now. Like uh, if you get uh, campaign with the get done with the campaign with an influencer and their followers repeated and then you know it it runs a cycle 
like uh, just in case if we if there is an um, organization creating hot noodles so you know for example if someone launches a hot noodles flavor may might challenge influencers to take on the challenge to you know finish two bowls of hot noodles and now they will challenge their followers and that's how the cycle works so um my take on the uh, you know um that uh, thing is you to get viral through influencers other than that if it doesn't work obviously then we will have to work right now i think that uh, influencers has taken over the market uh, quite um, aggressively so that's how you can you know work on the viral thing interesting gamify uh, you know like ice bucket challenge right you can gamify it yeah. try it if there's a cause or you can just you know pass on i i, I know that in your campaign that you know there was a very you know the, the the noodles were very extremely sour i think and people couldn't eat it yeah okay oh, going to yeah. gilad okay gilad i i don't know i have just my instinct says that you're not a fan of tiktok i don't know why but are you a fan of tiktok or not first of all that and then you know if somebody comes to you and says hey you want to go viral would you recommend them tiktok <laughs> i have to say that uh, specifically for us like we are um one of the key agencies working with TikTok so TikTok prepares us around five uh, companies every month to create videos for them and TikTok basically pays us to create them the content so they will be more successful on TikTok so as part of that i obviously love uh, the relationship that we have with TikTok it bring me um, uh, lots of success and it brings those businesses lots of success because we see that they are in top 1 top 2 top 3% of the content that it actually engages on the platform um and to tell you that uh, you know that this is something because we are uh, brain surgeons or you know flying people to nasa no it's not nothing about it is is genius it's it's purely based on data what worked before what type of content resonates with users trying to find those specific whether it's trends whether it's um, uh, specific elements that for that specific brand or for all of their competitor um, uh, uh, content which type of content actually shine more than the others now going viral I'm, I'm yeah, it's all about getting millions of millions of 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 views for each and every content but even for your own follower base if your average rate whether it's on on TikTok whether it's on Facebook whether it's on Instagram you have 3% 5% 7% that actually see your content and now you manage to get it to 4 to 6 to 8% so you you manage to actually learn what your audience wants and you also manage to see what type of content resonates more and you know that the first 3 seconds are the most crucial ones when most of the traffic actually abandons so how can you grab their attention in those 3 seconds and doing something funny and doing something crazy something that will not get them to continue on scrolling down to the next post but actually getting some more some more seconds and that will get you a bit higher than the than the noise so there are a lot of different elements i'm taking it more to mathematics uh, more than uh, like virality i'm trying to see how we are building a specific formula that will get you a higher chances does that promise you anything absolutely not uh do we have content that fails miserably of course just like anyone else at the end of the day the 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 question is more about can we get you to better to from where you were before or to better than the standard post and as long as we keep on getting you a higher engagement rate and a higher conversion rate we know that we are going in the right direction and and basically i'm trying to take it through the data point of of understanding what resonates with your specific audience i'm not trying to get you viral like beyonce or anything like that I, we don't care about that audience it's not your audience but we do yeah. want to see if we can use a lot of humor a lot of uh, things that will make you smile about a lot of things that will will touch you and because of that we will be able to rise above the crowd and and hopefully to get more people to engage with the content interesting very interesting perspective analytics data that those are the key points to see what people are consuming i think anybody who's on working on tiktok should know that you got to see your you know analytics and see what what are the videos being consumed from what part of the world uh, now going more deeper into you know strategies out there i just want to know the core right now the secret are some strategies that you guys adopt in your agency that cuts through the noise um uh, and helps your brands or businesses reach the right target audience right um uh, because right now it's information overload right there's so much noise um uh, the attention spam is going lower for each person how do you grab attention what are the strategies you apply to grab that attention uh and help the brands or the business reach the right target audience right so starting this question with flynn 
Yeah, I think one of the things that we've been seeing, this goes back to, I'm sorry, what Dave was saying with uh, the individuals can't go viral on TikTok, is we're seeing more and more brands showcasing the people behind the scenes who are creating the content. Uh, I think for a decade, especially on Twitter, you used to have these faceless comedians who were just doing brand content. And I think what we're seeing now is that individuals, whether it's executives or your social media managers, have an actual presence and that's who people want to connect with. I think for companies, whether you're in-house or agencies, I think that we're going to have to deal with a reckoning of if our, the people behind the accounts are why people are actually joining and also what is making these algorithms show your videos more. What does that sort of compensation mean? And are you going to see social media managers also almost be traded like sports athletes to different teams and have fans follow them from one account to the other uh, is a possibility. But I, I think that's really, if you're trying to cut through everything and you're trying to figure out why people should be watching your brand's content, put, put the people behind them, just spin the camera around and let them tell your brand story. And that's what's really working nowadays. Interesting perspective. I uh, love the answer, Flynn. Um, moving on to Ruben to add on to this one like is there something you want to add on to it what strategies do you think I think you spoke about referral system other strategies that you applied for your clients that actually cut through the noise yeah um, it's a great question and I think that's a really good point the noise you know the noise level is already really high and with AI I think it's just going to go even higher and I think it's important to truly understand your buyer psychology you know, not not what they're not not necessarily what they're paying for, but what are they really buying? What are their pressure points? What you know, we think business is so rational. Sometimes it's really irrational, and understand the buyer psychology, what the pressure points, where their budgets flowing. You know, where they're heading as an organization. What do they need to uh, achieve as an individual? I think making business much more personal again, and and having those conversations. I'm routinely surprised. I don't mean this in a disrespectful way how little our clients or, or folks in the marketplace in general actually know about folks in the target market. They have a really good sense or at least a decent sense of their existing customer base, but the biggest pie is the target market. They really don't understand um, the, the, the psychology, what's going on in the organizations, the pressure points, where they're heading, what are their aspirations. And finally, vision attracts provision, as the old saying goes. Vision attracts provision. What is the vision that the marketplace has? What's the vision that the target customer you're going after has? Can you? How do you tap into that? How do you tap into that vision? So making business very, very personal again, I think, is is very important. Data is important. It's great. I mean, you have to have it. There's no question about it. But there's no quote that says the conversation is the relationship. How many conversations are you having with actual people in your target market? Authentic, real, deep, trusting conversations, where you're really trying to understand how you can increase their impact and influence. And if you can get into that mindset, I think you'll have the best success. Loved, loved the answer, you know, talking with your customers. I think most even social media managers do not even know the names of the top people who contribute to their pages, to their groups, right? They just come, publish content, disappear. Um, a very good point, you know, that talking to customers is important. David, uh, is there a success story where you implemented some strategy for your client and uh, it cut through the noise and you started adopting that, you know, strategy to more clients? like? Is there a specific strategy you could share? Uh, yes. <clears throat> not only do they not know their target audience sometimes, they don't always truly understand their customers. They always say they do, right? But they never take the time or they fall victim to, they think they know them at one point in time, but their customers, you know, change and evolve, but they stop to pay attention, right? So I'm a huge advocate of, you know, not only getting access to, to as much data as possible so you can analyze what's going on. But I will actually listen to customer calls if, if your client does take calls, right? To hear what the customers are saying. What, what do they sound like? Who, what are the demographics, right? What are the right buzzwords? And, you know, thankfully for AI, um, that's in, it's speeding up that with call summaries, with, with this variety of call tracking services. So you don't actually necessarily need to listen to every call. It can help identify uh, worthwhile calls that are good and bad and cut through the noise of just like, is someone there? Okay, bye, right? So it, it could save you a lot of time, but uh, just listening to that and, 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 you know, cause you can't obviously always meet with customers. If you can, people will share a lot more in person, right? 
Um, they'll, share, they'll share stuff over a phone call. They'll share more over Zoom, but they'll share all sorts of stuff in person when it's not potentially being recorded, right? Um, so as much as you can get in front of customers and learn from them, um, reading, even reading form submissions or comments, reading chat summaries, like just dig deep because you'll learn so much and the clients who think they know their customers will be completely amazed. Um, they might think that, oh, our customers search for this, so this is how they find us. Well, yes, they are, but that's not your top, that's not your top clients, by the way. So they're often fascinated by, you know, who the real customers are, the language they're using, and all of that can impact of what your social organic posts say, the visuals, the ad copy, just a slight change. It's like, oh, wow, you get me now. You get this current time. This is all, this is what we're all facing, like I resonate with this. So yeah, the more, the more you can dig deep into that, it, it can really enhance all of your marketing efforts. And, and that will, that alone will set you apart from, from competitors. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, that's a wonderful strategy, I think. And that's very important that how would you set yourself apart from your customers, um, and cut through the noise. Gilad, do you want to add on this? How do you guys do? How do you guys cut through the noise? Uh, you know, something that actually worked and you were like, oh my God, this actually worked for us. Sure. Um, so I think that the, we always try to do a bit more kind of wilder concepts, like things that will get you like, what the hell did I just watch? And like those things that will make you want to watch it again or, or, or figuring out like what, what was uh, uh, the main uh, thing on, or why did it start this way or things, that, things of that nature. I think that working with creators uh, can get you very, very wild and interesting. And I think that the biggest challenge is to get the brands to give up a bit of all their brand guidelines and allowing some more freedom to speak about the brand from an eye of a user. And I feel like um, we started with that with, um, I think around two years ago, we opened uh, what we called Army of Creators. So we started employing specific creators just to be working with specific brands to create ads. And we tested that compared to highly, very expensive type of video productions with 3D, with 2D, like with the animations and, and characters coming to life and beautiful things in 360 and what have you. And a simple person coming to the camera, talking to the camera and saying what their experience was, 6x better performance. Like it's as simple as that. So I think that um, going from the most sophisticated types of asset to the most simplistic ones of a real person engaging with a real brand and, and just sharing their experience. And hopefully that experience was very positive, obviously, otherwise we weren't going to put money behind it. And then um, uh, be able to say, to share the story of so many different pe uh, people. Currently in our uh, a creator uh, army, we have 600 creators that are creating uh, uh, assets for the brands that we're working with each and every month. And that's not because um, uh, because it's fun. It's it's a huge amount of work. Like it's it's uh, like with each and every one of them, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and to get that approved with the brand, a huge amount of work. Having said that, it's so much more effective than producing those highly touched on each and every second that you're scrutinizing the script, and it's just like much more. It comes off as much more authentic in on on, on social, and because of it, people are resonating with that much further. So from the way that yeah. I did it, working with influencers and working with creators was the way for us to really scale with our clients. Yeah, very interesting perspective. You know, it's always funny to see that a person who actually worked so hard on a TikTok video, it doesn't go viral. But sometimes, you know, just a raw video, uh, just raw interview or somebody just walking by just gets viral. And you're like, I've wasted so much time on this. And, you know, it's not getting viral. And sometimes just a raw video works out there. It's very crazy out there. Um, so I think, yeah, that's a very interesting perspective um, to try raw videos, you know, and to see if it works. Um, Cesar, what strategy do you apply for the brand that actually worked and you thought that, hey, this is something that I never thought would work? And, you know, it brought in a lot of customers and sales. Yeah, so um, what I believe is that uh, for for any brand sharing the success story is a game changer, uh, specifically and especially if it gets viral on social media. So these social media platforms provide businesses with vast opportunities to connect, communicate, and you know build their relationship with their uh, customers. 
um one notable success story i would share, like to share about the airbnb and what we have learned from them and we are adapting this, that as well is which has capitalized on the power of social media to create a global community of travelers and you know through com compelling their storytelling and user generated content um airbnb has fostered a sense of trust within the users by showcasing you know unique uh, stories of the customers so i believe if we uh, share the stories of the consumers uh, it eventually uh, build that trust ability and trust factor among the other uh, followers as well and then you know we can build the customers then great great feedback all right just one last question guys and then we'll take questions from the audience from social media this live stream is going on facebook Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. All right, so the last question I have is, guys, for new people, the, for, the, for students, for founders who are trying to learn social media marketing, digital marketing, right, what's the source of knowledge or inspiration or book you would recommend to them? Because, you know, in pandemic, you know, there was a rise of marketeers. Everybody was trying to sell you a course, telling you that, hey, pay us money, you will make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, you know, just whenever you try to find somebody to learn from social media or digital marketing, you see them selling a course, you know, and like, get this book, earn $100,000 per year, you know, all those fancy people telling you stuff. Uh, but you know, the real, you know, the great is that, you know, there's a lot more in marketing than what you see on social media. So would you share some source of inspiration for new beginners out there who want to, or maybe somebody who's in marketing right now who want to scale up and, you know, boost up their skill levels. Uh, source of inspiration, um, and this would, I, I would start with, Glad. Sure. So I think that my my uh, experiences might be a bit uh, different than others because we are a bigger organization. I have amazing team members that are currently like in a VP level or director level, and ha they have you know 15, 20 years of experience. Um, and I think that I'm learning the most from team discussions and trying to come up with creative ideas or creative solutions for problems. I feel like this is something that helps me the most. I do read, obviously, a lot of industry blogs, and I'm, I'm attending in many different conferences, and I'm a judge in a lot of different conferences for awards uh, and, and, and award submissions. So I see the, the thought process from strategy all the way down to execution and, and need to provide scores for those uh, type of things. So for me, I kind of feel like I have, like, inside sources to see things that are happening uh, but i feel like uh, case studies in the internet you have a lot of them you have industry blogs uh, on each and every type of niches so try to find uh, a content uh, areas where you have content that's not just trying to sell you something but actually trying to show you how it worked on each and every step uh, and there are a lot of a lot of those on, uh, that are really good on the internet I think that besides that, trying to network with other professionals and seeing how they face specific uh, situation, uh, that always uh, it keeps my brain very fresh about the new ideas, new concepts, and, and new things mm -hmm. to test. So that's kind of, that was my tool. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Ruben, any feedback on that? It's really hard to start something on your own. It's much easier to do it as part of a community. So if you can find a community or a group of people that are trying to do the same thing, like the gentleman just said, and you can share peer-to-peer -peer knowledge, motivation, be encouragement for others, I think is super important. And then look for role models, look for people that you really admire and see how they did it. See if you can pick up on some trends and see if they make some recommendations from people you really trust for organizations that they recommend you should partner with and put the time and effort into. I, I would just say there's no, there's very few things that we talked about viral earlier. There isn't much overnight success, a lot of overnight success is 10 years or more in the making, right? And so you're going to have to pay a price, meaning like you have to stick with something for a while try fail try again keep enduring and if you do and uh, and you're flexible and you're teachable then i think that uh, you'll ultimately you'll catch that wave and you'll have and you'll have some success but i think doing things alone is tough getting a, being a part of a community and a community effort will greatly increase your chances for success in any endeavor awesome perfect yeah it totally makes sense uh, david uh, if we're speaking uh, directly like to students and young people uh, trying to start a company in, in this industry, just realize you're already likely the smartest person if you're using the latest social apps and know how to use it and, and, and to gain followers, right? If you figure that out, you already know how it works. Just, just pause and, and realize what is causing this and how can I monetize this, right? 
so I'm about to date myself, but like way back when, when Hot or Not, Friends Are MySpace, right? You know, I enjoyed what made it work, but I didn't actually pause at that moment and say, how can I make money off this? How can I get a, a business out of this, right? So if, if, if you are already good at these apps, like, you know, and, and I'm sorry, because we all age out eventually, right? So like Be Real is popular with college students. There's always going to be more of these small fringe apps that we just don't know about. That's why I constantly have to keep uh, talking to younger people, like what's happening now and how to use it, right? So I get on there, but, you know, at my age, I'm not doing a very good job, but, um, but they know how to do it. So if you are already using the latest social app and know how it works, just pause and realize how can I monetize that. Um, other than that, like, if you inherently have, you know, a, a, a mind for psychology and a love for business, I mean, that is what marketing is put all that together and you know, you'll, you'll do well. Yeah. Like you said, learning is a process. It's not an event. So keep on learning with new spaces out there. Wonderful comment, David. Um, next, Cesar, do you want to add something onto it? Yeah. Uh, uh, my answer is going to be very short. Uh, like I'll share my own experience. Like I, uh, my sources were reputable uh, digital marketing blogs and websites. Uh, such as Moz, HubSpot, and Neil Patel, obviously. So, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, those are good sources. And I also recommend people going through Google Garage. The courses they have, like, they are fundamental yeah. ones. And Google didn't pay me for this. Just I just recommend it on them. All right, going to Gilad, what tools or what sources do you recommend to young ones? Um, so I think that the, the tools that I recommend to young ones, um, I think... Feel like it really depends on which field you are um like even in on digital in general you have the creative part you have the media you have the bi the analytics the monitoring the, the media buying on each and every platform like you have so many different uh, avenues and i think that each of them is like their own profession um so at the end of the day i think that if you are a new uh, uh, and you uh, uh, kind of coming into the into the marketing world, you need to kind of just find what are the things that get you passionate the most, and then based on that, try to see what uh, 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 what are the courses that could be the most relevant for your specific niche. Um, I feel like the getting like a, a specialist on something very very unique. Let's say if you are. Facebook expert, and you know the system, they add the uh, uh, network systems, or specifically on uh, on the creative economy and understanding exactly how to create the perfect uh, uh, asset. Um, I think that each and every one of those things are different professions, and it's just a matter of what it is that you want to, where you want to be perceived, or how do you actually want to be looked at in five years from now, and then what are the things to look on others that are in that niche, in that industry, currently doing that role, what are the, the, the path that they have done, what are the type of courses that they have done, and that can also help you uh, to get uh, to get you to where you are, like trying to reverse engineer someone successful yeah. that is done through a similar path. <laughs> Yeah, some, uh, great summing it up. Uh, I think we're over time. Um, should we, are you guys open to take a few, one, three questions from the audience? If you guys are open, I can take one or three questions. Um, and Ruben had to leave. Uh, he just, he just met, left the message. He had to leave. So let me just take one or two questions. I had to ask more questions. This was a very interesting conversation, by the way, guys. So much learning over there from myself, too. I wanted to also ask what are the you know, features that you would like to have in a social media marketing tool uh, because there was a self-plug over there, but I just can't ask right now <laughs> because you're up time. Okay, just asking the first comment right now. Uh, let's see who we got. Uh, All right. Let's so uh, Shaquille. Shaquille on Facebook is asking, how important is it for marketers to experiment with new platforms and technologies to stay ahead of the curve? I think that's what David said. David, would, like, would you like to add something onto it? I think this is something that you resonates with your last point. Yeah, don't, don't ever be blinded by anything. Constantly search for the latest apps, try to get on there, observe the audience, and, and think of how can I take a, well, how can I take advantage of, how can I market to or communicate with this audience? Perfect. Yeah, nice one. All right, the next question is with Faison, I think. And how can marketers strike the right balance between automation and personalization in their marketing campaigns to deliver efficiency without sacrificing human touch? Oh, that's something that I often see with the AI stuff, to be honest. You know, I see a lot of emails. I know ChatGPT 
it's generated by chat GPT, right? Uh, the prompt is not so good. That's why the answers are so blunt. And you know, it's, it's, I think that's a great problem that we'll have in the future. Uh, who wants to take this one? Gilad, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I, I can sure. jump in. Um, yeah. So I have to say that uh, trying to strike the right balance is not something that I care too much about. Like at the end of the day, I'm trying to understand what helps my clients and what helps their clients engaging with the brand. And if it's only going to the right or this brand is only going to the left, like only doing things that are very highly personalized or doing things that are a bit more generic that will fit a, a wider audience. For each and every case, it's all like always a matter of what is the KPI? What are we trying to achieve? At the end of the day, we have a goal. What is that goal? It's not impressions, right? It's always much deeper than that. It could be the cost per uh, uh, click, the cost per uh, install, the cost per registered user, loyal user, paying user. We have a goal in front of us. What is the, the, the most efficient way of getting to that goal is a few different approaches, seeing what works, and triple down on that. And, and, and which like trying to strike a balance is something that we don't uh, uh, care too much about. Like we care about the objective of the client and the, the fact that it, it, it works and it works effectively in front of their customers. Yeah, nicely said. Next question. Um, uh, just last two questions and then I guys, I would leave you guys. I know we're over time. Sorry about that. Uh, Greg Chesson, just a quick question. What strategies can marketers employ for the effectiveness of their marketing campaigns across channels? That's a very generic one. Uh, Flynn, do you want to take that one? Uh, I would say uh, I'll give you a generic answer. I think measuring the results and uh, optimizing, you know, it's, it is wild how many people launch campaigns without knowing what success looks like. And uh, that is the most kind of the most basic level, but it, it's worth repeating. If you are getting launch, you yeah. should know in your head what success feeling looks like, what failure looks like, and when you're going to measure that. Uh, if, if you don't, you'll, you'll never get more effective. Yeah, perfect. And Neha, I think she's the one managing, moderating this session. She just sent a question. <laughs> Okay, the question is, how can small businesses with limited resources adopt their marketing strategies to compete with larger, more established brands? I think this is a challenge that I gave her, I think, and this is trying, trying to, you know, how could we with a limited budget challenge the bigger ones? <laughs> Great question. Anybody want to take this one? I think multiple people can join in, yeah. Yes, I think that um, we're working with, on one end, enterprise, beasts and on the other end uh, we're working with a lot of startups and those startups usually have a friction of the budget of the the big ones if you're thinking about the startup like pre-seed or seed a or like round a compared to uh, fortune 500 companies they don't have the same ammunition so to speak uh, so i think that the, the small businesses they just need to try and and, and the, their benefit is that they can fight against the the larger uh, organizations by the the pace of things that they are moving along like to get something across with Google Maps, for example, getting a new set of screenshots live in the store, needed 13 decision makers to give us the, the agreement in order to put something live. And with the startup, I, we are coming up with a concept and it's live the next day instead of actually taking two and a half months of getting it live to the, to the store. So I think that that's the, 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 the weapon, so to speak, of, of, of testing fast and, and failing fast and seeing what works. Uh, and, and changing um, uh, different elements and testing different new environments, testing new tools, that will be their biggest benefit. So they can be there first before the entire, you know, the, 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 the late majority comes on and then it's much more expensive and it's much harder to uh, shine above the, the, the noise. So any new feature that, is, that, that there is out there, any new tool that is out there, be there first and that will be probably the, the, the best chances for you to shine. Something is wrong with the microphone of yours. Oh, I was mute. Sorry about that. I was saying that somebody from the team actually said, do you guys use social champ to deal with multiple clients? Again, a plug I think I missed. So just want to ask, you know, what tools do you guys use as agency owners that are part of your livelihood, you could say? You know, video editing, video premiere, I don't know, those tools for social media, listening, publishing. Um, just to have an idea perspective, what's in the market right now being used? Um, I can start with Sidra, and I can continue with everybody else, and then we can say goodbye. <laughs> so, 
so currently we have started using Adobe Photoshop Firefly. Uh, it has uh, bought like uh, multiple changes in the graphics, obviously. So we have been uh, doing the photography in house, and now that we have uh, Adobe for Firefly, we have started conducting it uh, for the shoot and all. Wow, perfect! Yeah, I just loved beta Facebook Photoshop. The generative AI was super amazing and crazy. David, would you like to join in and say something about the tools? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say my boots are on the ground anymore, but my, my team is constantly testing a variety of tools. Um, I can't say that one really jumps out over another, so I give the team full reign. So but like anything, I, I just encourage everyone to experiment and constantly challenge the tools and the ways you do business um, until you find things that actually do work for you as a business or an agency or even on a client level so yeah yeah G great once you give the freedom to the team so that they can make decisions that's when they think that they're leaders now and they're like they put their everything in the company great idea uh flynn do you want to add something to it uh, we use Looker studio it's google's worst supported product so uh if anyone needs I think you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah. All right, Glad. I think you're the other last guy. Um, yeah, uh, so I think that um, my team uses uh, way too many tools. Uh, we are paying more than $400,000 a year just for the subscription <laughs> tools of the research tools by themselves, and then the creative tools, and then the media tools, and the bidders and the automations, and uh, like uh, visualization tools. So it, it really depends on which department are you referring to. Um, and uh, and I think that, uh, you know, my my uh, uh, favorite one is Asana for the for following what happens on each and every project to understand where it's kind of uh, being delayed on things and when we are uh, not really meeting the KPI or looking on the weekly summaries of understanding what actually happened with specific projects. But that's on my view on the management. I'm sure that if I ask each and every team of mine, they will probably provide you four different tools of their favorites. We are always testing first with, again, with Midjourney and with ChatGPT and like with all of the different AI tools. Um, Jasper AI is something that my, my uh, creative team really likes on, on the content writing and there are like so many different tools uh, that are out there. Um, so I, I can't really give you like a, a, a great answer on this one because it's, it's like really depending by, by each and every team and each and every department. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I again forgot. I was focusing on uh, Flynn. I think you got disconnected. You can ask again. Uh, you can ask her again. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll say Looker Studio. It's good for data analysis. It's, it's the best tool we found, especially um, for comparing different sources of traffic. If you're looking to compare like social to search, it's provided by Google. So yeah, Looker Studio. Oh, good stuff. All right, I think there are a lot of questions, but we will just skip those. I see Yumna asking questions, and a lot of people asking in the comments. But there's a limitation to the time. I would really thank, you know, the everybody over here to join. They joined us, helped us answer tough questions uh, about the future of AI, how you know it's being done, how the how they do it in their industry, their expertise. I hope everybody watching got some sort of valuable information. Um, what's being done behind you know the digital agency? Uh, follow these steps. Uh, you can always connect with these people. We'll be sharing a transcript of this webinar. Uh, the, the video will be going live across our blog page. Uh, we'll be sharing the details, all the speakers, with their links within the blog page uh, so you can reach out to them. Uh, those are good friends. My team has found out good agencies that are doing great work. Uh, again, I really thank you for being on the first show. This is our first attempt. You know, apologize if we went a little bit late. You know, technical issues out there. Thank you again for joining in. We'd love to, ha you know, have you on board again, speak to you, understand your problems, see how we can work together uh, in the future. Uh, as a token of appreciation for joining the session, we'll send you an email as a gift, something that, that we'd like to give you as a gift. You can share it with your team. Uh, again, you know, loved having you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, see you next time. Have a good day, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.